2018, what a great and interesting year for cars. It's become the year where every car looks like a Batmobile to non-car people. The Devel 16 is still a scam, the Hennessy Venom F5 finally has an engine, and European cars are faster than American cars in a straight line, but American cars are faster than European cars around corners. This truly is the darkest timeline. Ford GT. Set in beautiful, historic Britain. Speaking of American cars, let's start off talking about American cars. And don't worry, I will get to the other countries later in this video, so please stick around. This won't just be me waking off to the glory of America, so just, just relax, alright? We'll, we'll get there. We'll get to the other countries. Anyways, ZR1. Yes, the ZR1. There it is, the crown king of Corvettes. The ultimate midlife crisis mobile. Because when life's got you down, the ZR1 will bring you up. Up in all kinds of places. The ZR1 was doing what every Corvette does best, and that was slaying supercars several times its price, left, right, up, down, and other dimensions. If you can name it, the ZR1 has slain it. In all seriousness, the C7 ZR1 is without a doubt the first Corvette to ever widely be acknowledged across the automotive community as a supercar. Its interior finally doesn't suck, the car is extremely fast, and do you see how much carbon fiber this car has? For that price point, you gotta admit, this is one hell of a budget fast car. In other American news, we still have yet to give a flying f about dual clutch transmissions. Like seriously, why make a lighter, more reliable, and more efficient shifting transmission when you can just keep on adding gears? Yes, when we thought the 8-speed Camaros and Challengers weren't getting ridiculous, with 2018 we saw the introduction of the 10-speed Mustang GT. And at this rate, we'll still be using torque converter automatics by the year 2030. In which case, American muscle and pony cars will have more speeds than your average Tour de France bicycle. I'm talking 21-speed transmissions. You're going to need paddles on your paddles. Dodge, on the other hand, has been doing really well in the boat business with a brand new boat, the Dodge Demon. Are these jokes still funny? They aren't. Alright, I'll stop. Anyways, despite having a really outdated chassis, suspension, and really just everything else except for the engine, that doesn't stop Dodge from shoving their engine into literally anything they get their hands on. Like, I can't wait until they make a Dodge Caravan Hellcat. I, I wish that were a joke, but I could actually see them doing that. But seriously, Dodge, I'd rather you guys get to work on resurrecting the Viper than doing whatever it is that you guys are doing. And I swear to God, if it has a V8 and not a V10, I'll probably still buy it because Viper. As for Britain, the only things I need to say are McLaren Senna, Forza Horizon 4, and that's about it. Anyways, moving on. Moving over to Europe now. Europe is still doing what Europe does best. Banning memes, or I mean making supercars. Yes, making exorbitantly expensive, high-performance supercars that 99.9% .9 of us watching this video will never be able to afford, but it's okay since the ZR1 is still faster than half of them and a fraction of their price, so just buy that instead. Throwing shade aside, the fastest of the fast from Europe truly was the fastest of the fast. Lamborghini was so sick of people mistaking their cars as the Batmobile that they finally just gave up and did indeed finally make a car that actually looks like a Batmobile. This new Lamborghini came to us in the form of the SVJ, which stands for Subscribe to PewDiePie. The SVJ's design is so edgy, it makes Kirito look like a normie scrub lord, and boy does the edge cut. Cut through the air, that is, as this car made a blisteringly fast lap time around the Nürburgring of 6 minutes and 44 seconds, completely blowing Lamborghini's previous record out of the water. Serious kudos to Lamborghini. Even though a lot of non-car people see them as super fast, super expensive cars, this is actually a pleasant surprise and a very recent development for their company. Lamborghinis were never really known as track cars, and their main competitor, Ferrari, always had a more of a racing legacy than them. It seems that in the past few years, our man Ferruccio Lamborghini can finally look down from the clouds and smile knowing that his lifelong dream of making better cars than Ferraris has finally come true. And while the Lamborghini was busy going fast through turns, the Koenigsegg Gera RS was just busy going, well, fast in general. But bladed, didn't that record happen late 2017? Shh, just let me have this. Just, just, just let me have this. If there's anything we can learn about a country that hasn't been in a war in the past two centuries, it said they make great YouTubers and great hypercars. That's right, the Swedish Koenigsegg Gera RS set a blistering top speed of 284 miles an hour with wind assistance and an average VMAX of 277 miles an hour, completely blowing the overly engineered and extremely overrated Bugatti Chiron out of the water. 
and it seems like Bugatti themselves will finally stop chasing the egg boys of Sweden as their brand new Devo only has a top speed of 237 miles an hour, which is not very high in the hypercar world. But according to Bugatti, it's as luxurious as ever, but more importantly to them, it's as fast as ever when it comes to cornering on a track. And you know what, track performance is definitely something to praise as compared to just sheer straight line speed performance, but that does leave Koenigsegg rather lonely at the top speed battle. So let's hope our boys back home in America are crazy enough to go through with the Hennessy Venom F5. Or maybe even the Dubai built 5000 horsepower Devel 16 will join in on the top speed battle. <laughs> No, that's just no, that that's we all saw what the first road going car was this year. So if you don't know, the, the Vel 16 was finally unveiled this year as a road going prototype and it's it's an LS powered shell car and they said it's going to be done, I think, early next year. I, I don't see them pulling a V. You know what? Just I, I, I don't want to talk about this car. It has worse build quality than your average Toyota Camry. Like seriously, look at this toy steering wheel, that exposed interior, that alignment. And you get the point. If there's anything we've learned from this, it's that having a lot of money does not make up for hundreds of years of engineering. Moving to the other side of Asia, and I mean the complete other side, let's take a look at what Japan is up to. Hmm, nothing really happened, I guess. Probably because Japan is too busy with anime these days to be bothered with cars. They're so busy, in fact, that Toyota only added a whole whopping 5 horsepower to their Hachiroku and didn't even bother making the engine for their new iconic Supra and just asked BMW to do it instead. I want to call this Supra new, but the car has been stuck in development hell for so long it feels like Toyota has just been stroking us as we were all on the brink of edging with each new announcement until we ultimately just kinda lost interest. Seriously, Toyota, did you see what happened with the Acura NSX? Don't hype up a car for a long, long time and then fail to deliver. Especially, do not try to destroy the nameplate of an old car, just, just name it something else. Just let the super legacy remain in the 90s, let that be the golden age of JDM culture. And to be honest, I feel like a lot of companies never really understood what really captured us in the golden age of JDM. And it's not that we're nostalgic or stuck in the past, it's just that we liked simplicity and reliability, and that's what Japanese cars were known for. I can't imagine how a BMW inline 6 will affect that type of legacy, and we already saw what kind of happened with the hybrid torque vectoring NSX. It was too complicated and not very successful and not well received. It wasn't a bad car, but let's be real, it should have just been named something else, and I really feel the same way it should have been done with the Toyota Supra. Will it suck? We'll find out. Anyways. Nissan is also somewhat guilty as despite the R35 GTR and 370Z Fair Lady being successful at their introduction, they are slowly becoming overpriced and outdated when compared to competitors and similar price ranges. Like Nissan. What is this? Art? I mean, it doesn't look horrible I guess, but just, just start working on the R36 already and the new Fair Lady too while you're at it. At this rate, if Japan gets any lazier, Korea will catch up to them, and god am I not joking, since Korea has been on the move lately. The new Kia Stinger GT took the entire automotive community by surprise this year, because at its humble price tag of 38 grand, it had amazing luxury to rival its German counterparts. The comfort of a Grand Tour, the speed of a proper sports sedan, and the option to either enjoy it in the beautiful freedom of rear-wheel drive or the versatility of all-wheel drive. It was a car that nobody asked for but became a car that everyone wanted. It's to the point that calling something just a Kia or just a Hyundai is no longer even an insult seeing how far those two brands have gone. Kia went as far to even open saloons and malls just to advertise the car. For example, here in the mall of Georgia, I shit you not, there's actually a whole store for it. And Kia isn't alone in their conquest to expand KDM culture, as Hyundai and their Genesis lineup release yet another addition to their G lineup, as this time it's a compact sports sedan called the G70. I don't even need to describe the level of awesome this car is, because the car speaks for itself. And with that, we conclude the year of 2018. So here's to looking forward to the new year of 2019, where best girl Shelby Chan will be unveiled, more mid-engine Corvette news, praying the Supra doesn't suck, 8 series BMWs make a return, Subi bros will still be vaping, Mustangs will keep on mustanging, and classic cars will keep on appreciating. 
Anyways, thank you guys very much for watching. This video was heavily inspired by Gigguk's yearly anime recap series. I'm going to link to his channel below in the description. But if you're new to cars or you want to learn about car culture, make sure to subscribe to my channel and also make sure to subscribe to PewDiePie to support your independent creators because YouTube Rewind sucks. YouTube's slowly becoming corporate tube with T-Series and other multi-channel network crafts. Support your independent creators. But seriously, thank you guys so much for everything that has happened in this past year on YouTube. It's changed my life a lot and I'm definitely looking forward to doing Doing more of it as always though make sure to share this video around because it did take me a while to make it i apologize for that so i do want it to get seen by people but again though thank you guys very much for watching and i will see you guys next year blade angel out